I just say roots and herbs Calm my nerves Make you cool and trouble Hey Ashwagandha Make me stay longer So simple really make me do need no gorilla lilla You do suck one and I spin like a propeller lilla Rate of all to do you need no umbrella lilla Greetings guys, my name is Chef Troy Levy and welcome to Idle Talks Pod Class. I'm your host and today we are going to do an introduction episode where I'll tell you a little bit about Idle Talk Pod Class, what it is about and what is the ambition for Idle Talks Pod Class. Now, Idle Talk Pod Class for me is just a way of communicating with our people. When I say Idle Talk, a lot of people say, Ital talk, what does that mean? Ital talk, well, Ital just mean natural. So we're gonna be having natural conversations about our food and how important is our food being our medicine. We're also gonna be discussing the connections between the food that we consume and our mental health. We're gonna be speaking to musicians, teachers, we're going to be speaking to nutritionists. We're going to be speaking to farmers. And we're going to be speaking to a lot of chefs and restauranteurs. So please stay tuned for this is the beginning of Idle Talks Podcast. Now, Idle Talk Podcast for me is where I create an opportunity for a lot of my friends and colleagues. I've been having discussion with a lot of people and realized that there's a lot of conversation that we should be having, especially amongst ourselves, especially as people from the Caribbean and Africa and a lot of third world country that people are conditioned to think a certain way. I just think it is important for us to have open conversation about things that we were indoctrinated with and a lot of superstitious things that we believe in and we're following and bringing it up and teaching our young one the same way we are brought up knowing well and good that they are just superstition so i thought thought spot class is going to be discussing just a lot of issues that affect our society today and our belief that has definitely brought us to the state that we're in right now where we're not able we're not properly able to communicate with our kids and offspring because we were not taught of how to have certain conversation with adults when we were growing up so i think title talk podcast is going to be one of those things where we have discussions with people and you know just figuring out what people are thinking figuring out what is important to them and how when we speak are we hack are we do things to affect them how does it affect them create a platform create space where people are able to discuss things that you know a lot of people might think that you shouldn't be discussing your kids you know growing up in, in in the caribbean i could tell you a little bit about me before we get started growing up in the caribbean i've seen a lot of people around me that just were told that you're a kid you should just go sit down and shut up when we have important things that affect us to discuss with our parents our guardian and other people so i thought talk podcast is going to take you through a journey Take it through my journey as a kid growing up in Glengough, Jamaica, and the things that I've experienced, maybe not directly to me, but I've seen my friends and cousins and family member experience. We're going to dis have a discussion about all of these things. Now, before we get started and jump into today's topic about how I was brought up and my experience with things that we were conditioned to think, let me just give you a small introduction about myself. I am Chef Troy Levy. I was born and raised in Jamaica, grew up in Glengarth, St. Catherine. And my childhood was one of the most awesome childhood, in my opinion. I've experienced all my experience. I definitely would not change a lot of it for nothing else, you know. Um, 
Born and raised in Jamaica. I left Jamaica when I was 18 years old, right after I graduated high school. To be exact, about three days after I graduated high school, I migrated to the United States, where I came to meet my mother, who migrated just a year earlier. And I met my father for the first time. So it was definitely a challenge. You know, it was a definite culture shock when I came to America. And you know, experiencing a lot of things that a little country boy in the country have not experienced. You know, snow was one of the biggest thing because I came here um, in 2000. And in 2000, if you guys can remember who are from the diaspora, that was one of the biggest snowstorm ever hit New York for a long, long time. So a lot of people were telling me that I brought the snow with me. So you know it was a culture shock coming in experiencing a lot of easy way of consuming food where we have a chinese restaurant and um you know just con the convenience of a lot of things so the culture shock where i live in a country where we just started getting telephone house phone and just started getting electricity in the way um because you know everybody had electricity somewhat but you know, when you live in certain rural areas, there is not electricity available unless you bridge the light or, 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 or steal the light. In, in That's what they said in Jamaica. So, you know, my experience growing up was just based on survival, you know. Really and truly appreciate my mother. I like the rest of my say, appreciate of my mother because she was there and she definitely... I've never seen, you know, if, if, if era could be, um, amplified and get bigger, my mother is the greatest era, you know, she had definitely worked, you know, along with my stepfather, but she had definitely worked tirelessly to make sure her kids were cared for and fed and nurtured and, and loved. And, you know, she definitely did the best with what she had so i really have to comment my ear every single day mommy i love you and you know um just experiencing friends and 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 and, and you know and other people around me you know because this is ital talks podcast um growing up um one of the early childhood um situation that i can remember up until today is um, you know, just the fact that my Rastafarian's uncle, they were, one of my uncle was at Bobo Hill. So he was living in Bobo Hill with Prince Emmanuel and, and all the other Rasta in Bulbay. And one of the thing was just experiencing whenever he comes to our place, when he comes to Glenga from Bulbay, we had the opportunity of consuming ital you know when he comes he would make his broom he was make his mat he was one of those he was entrepreneur before he was entrepreneur and you know i understood i understood that you know just being an entrepreneur where you're creating things for yourself i was there trying to plot the, 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 the um the the grass to make the mat because usually you would plant the grass and then you, you, you turn it you make a circle with it and stitch it up so it becomes like a mat so at the young age i was just intrigued by the whole rasta liberty and the ita liberty and <clears throat> that definitely grew on me because that memory that i had growing up and just experiencing ita food whether it's you know, when I had some stew with beans, different beans and susumba and okra and different things, or when I just the height of liberty where we're eating a lot of fruits, or, you know, just the entrepreneurial ship of natural way of how the Rasta live. You know, these were things that definitely resonate with me and bring back so much memory, like I'm getting emotional right now. It's just, it was just a joy for me. You know, and the whole item, liberty and lifestyle, I think that has made me who I am today because when I remember these things and I reminisce on these things, 
it definitely gave me a sense of pride, you know, give me a sense of joy because, you know, there are so much things that I grew up experiencing. Um, you know, and when I came to America in 2000, a lot of the, these things were not highlighted in the way that it should, and it wasn't promoted. And, you know, and just to see now that I am, I have become one of the pioneer who has definitely been promoting ITAL, not just ITAL food, but the whole liberty of ITAL. You know, I'm super, super grateful and it brings a lot of joy. It warms my heart to be able to do that, to be able to present a part of my culture, what I actually grew up experiencing, you know, coming to America and, 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 and now being able to traveling the world and, you know, just encouraging people and introducing people and, and enlightening people on ITAR, the lifestyle, the liberty. You know, whether <clears throat> whether I'm in Tanzania or Dar es Salaam in, in East Africa or I'm in Johannesburg um, in South Africa, I definitely travel. Whether I'm in the DR, the Dominican Republic, wherever I go, I try to encourage ones and inspire ones about Ita liberty and the way I experience it. So, you know, this show is definitely going to show a lot about who I am what I've experienced and what I have, um, I don't like to brag about, but what I have accomplished and what I have learned and what I have taught. Because one of the things with me is um, <clears throat> there was a quote that I read somewhere and then I started putting it on most of my pictures whenever I uh, post pictures or anything is in order to be, in order to be, in order to teach, we must remain teachable. You know, so I, whatever I do and wherever I go, I am open, willing, and able to learn from every aspect of my life. But I'm also grateful that I am tasked with, with knowledge enough that I can share with other people. I, I don't even consider it teaching. I consider it sharing with other people. So, I talk talk spot class, man. We're going to be speaking about me, my journey, my culture. And we're going to have discussion with those different chefs, you know, their journey and things that they are not really able to express because of the fact of how we were, um, we were taught as young people, you know, because, you know, growing up in Jamaica, um, I could tell you this, growing up in Jamaica, I realized that... <clears throat> There are so much things that right now in 2024, we have common sense and we know that most of these things that we were taught was very much superstition things. But the thing is, when you are young and you are conditioned by somebody who has been conditioned, by somebody who has been conditioned, it's very difficult for you to actually express yourself and be yourself. You know, because personally, if you feel a certain way and you try to express certain things to an adult, a caretaker, or somebody who is looking over you in a certain way, then that was like taboo. You can't do that. That is not really acceptable by society. You know, growing up, I realized that um, I grew up and I experienced so much domestic violence and so much things around me. No. When I say around me, um, my mother, I've never ever seen a man lay a hand on her. And I've only seen her with my stepfather from my, you know, from started growing up. And I've never seen him even raise his voice at her. But I have so much neighbors who were verbally abused, physically abused, emotionally abused. And that has definitely put me in a space at a time in my life when I was mimicking or following or thought these things were normal. So I guess I was normalizing these things. And these things have definitely allowed me to, you know, in the search or the journey of finding self, I would be basically on what things that I've experienced around me, things that I've seen, you know, um, 
So I was, I am pretty sure I was in, in at one point in my life, I have met and get involved with a lot of people, a lot of different females who I thought that I should just express myself based on how I was, you know, based on just the, the surrounding that I experienced in Jamaica. You know, whether it's verbally abusive or physically abusive or emotionally abusive, I I tend to go back to that when I was younger. And that has affected me in a lot of ways. It has affected a lot of people. And, you know, not saying I want to come on my podcast and speak to people and tell people, you know, all my deep and darkest secret, but I really truly take time out to apologize publicly to a lot of people who have i have might hurt in a lot of ways because one of the thing is when you're trying to find yourself and trying to understand yourself or like the rest of them say overstand yourself you're gonna make a mistake you know especially i wasn't i i had the, my rest of uncle and they would come and they would definitely talk about marcus garvey and they would definitely speak about his Majesty and Prince Emmanuel and, you know, a lot of African um, eras. But I never really had that father figure who would say, Troy, this is how you deal with things. This is how you deal with a woman. This is how you deal with certain things. Like, again, like I said, my stepfather, R.I.P., um, Mercy Soul, he was... Just one of those laid by person who he loved us, he nurtured us as best as he can, but he didn't take the time out to say, All right, you know what? This is how you treat a woman. And I see, when I see, he was always a provider. And that's what I strive to be a provider. But being a provider without being equipped with the knowledge and understanding of how to deal with certain situations when they arise, you know, it's going to lead in a situation where. You have to provide for crop, and you have to provide for who no need to get provided to. And then when they react, when they act a certain way, then you react now. It's just going to bring you back to what you have experienced before, which enables them being abusive on certain things. You're going to refer to that because that's how you see a man and a woman operate. You never see much inside your house, but you see it around you. My, all my neighbors bar none all my neighbors was just definitely abusive um when i it was just that husband that just consistently cussing his wife verbally just cussing her cussing her cussing her cussing her or that neighbor who's just having wife and because he's doing a lot of things and he's guilty of a lot of things he would have just physically kick her down box her down and beat her up or this neighbor who she feel like she's a bully and she want to bad up and beat up our our, our significant other our, our husband our boyfriend or whatever you know so these kind of things i've seen them so growing up and experiencing certain things and not having the proper tool to address certain things it definitely has made me did some things that i am definitely not proud of but one of the things that i realize now is I have just, I've spoken to a lot of my friends. I've spoken to a lot of my, you know, people my age. Uh, and what I realize is there's so much trauma that is affecting us that a lot of us still feel like we don't need to do therapy, still, don't, still feel like we don't need to communicate or converse with people. We buckle a lot of those things in and keep a lot of those things in, and it is affecting us in a major way. So, I thought that's part class. Basically, we're going to discuss things with people and we're going to get to the nitty gritty. We're going to get to a part where we can openly speak to ourselves, speak to each other, and just love and appreciate of each other the best way we can, you know, because if we don't start speaking to each other, and have certain dialogue and conversation and if we need help we get help we seek help we know where to find help then it's not gonna really we're not gonna really go anywhere we're gonna definitely be on a standstill and not moving forward not doing nothing positive and no matter how much money 
or no matter how much vanity that we acquire over the space of our life, we're still not going to find that peace and that happiness and that joy that we desire are is ordained for us because of the fact that we don't know how. So I can talk about class, but we're going to have a conversation. We're going to speak about us, speak about you, speak about me. Like the rest of my name says, speak about I and I. And, you know, no matter how young or how old they are, because you have a lot of older people who are just conditioned and they hold on to certain things that if you tell them about therapy, if you tell them about meditating, if you tell them about eating healthy, if you tell them about certain things, it's like, yeah, of bad word at them. You're cursing them. You're, you're violating them. You're disrespecting them. So High Talk Talks podcast is about we communicating with each other, having open, natural, high talk conversations. So this is the first episode, my introductionary episode of High Talk Talks podcast. And please remember to subscribe to Anywhere you get your podcast, Ital Talks Podcast will be there. Follow us on Ital Talks Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You'll find us everywhere. Ital Talk Podcast is in your face. So, without further ado, thank you guys so much for tuning in to the first introductionary episode of Ital Talks Podcast. And again, it is sponsored by. Taste of Ital Condiments. Go on Instagram and follow us for Taste of Ital Condiments, where Taste of Ital Mango Scotch Bonnet Sauce is something that you can use on anything. It's a very tropical flavor, and it is definitely has the Scotch Bonnet heat with the mango sweetness, a real balanced and flavorful condiment. Also, our Elsher Style Escovitch Sauce. Now, our Elsher Style Escovitch Sauce is a pickled vegetable with scotch bunny pepper of course and it can be eaten on anything recently i've seen people having our extra style scotch bonnet escovy sauce on their salad so people have it on their salad they have it on their protein they have it on their starches whether it's quinoa rice and peas or anything else so i thought this of i condiments follow us on instagram and thank you so much. And tune in next time for another episode of Ital Talks Podcast. We're there. <laughs>